This is the moment I realized that Zabuza is so cool. And to be honest, he was a goat introductory villain in Naruto. So today I decided to recreate his water prison to Tsungido. By the end of the video, he will get something like this. Well, just showing off my constantly improving editing skills. What's that? You didn't get to see the effect properly. Fine, here you go. For the tutorial, I will be using Godot 4.2 and I'm also using an add-on shader loop, version 2.2.3 to be precise. Now with all of that out of the way, let's get started. I have this simple scene and the main focus is this mesh instance 3D node, which uses a sphere mesh. I've already gone ahead and applied the shader material, which uses the shader. Now the first thing I want to do is set the color to black. So in the fragment processor, albedo equals vec3 of 0, 0, 0. Then I want to make the surface super smooth. So I will go roughness equals 0 0.2. And also add a tiny bit metallic. So metallic equals 0 0.2. You can use float uniforms to control the metallic and roughness, but I will leave that to you. Now I want to add a color to the outer edge of my sphere, which is called a Fresnel. I can add Fresnel by using the dot product of normal and view vectors. Normal is a direction only vector that shoots out perpendicular to the mesh fragment. View vector is also a direction only vector that points from mesh fragment to the camera. Now let's say I'm looking at my sphere from this side and if I use dot product of normal and view vectors for this fragment both the vectors will be pointing towards the camera. Dot product for parallel vectors is 1 so I will get 1. Now for this fragment view vector will point towards the camera and the normal vector will be shooting up like this. And dot product for perpendicular vector is 0 so I will get 0. So here let's go float Renell equals dot product of normal and view and dot product can return value from 1 to minus 1 so let's clamp it between 0 to 1. Now I want inverse of this value I want 0 instead of 1 and vice versa so I will go 1 minus the entire thing. Now let's visualize it so albedo equals vec3 of Fresnel. I have this nice Fresnel but I want to control the size. I can do that using power function. Power of this entire thing and I will go raise to 10. But you can use a uniform here as well. Power function simply darkens the values which are less than 1 as we increase the power. And I have Fresnel. I also want to add the similar effect when my sphere interacts with other meshes. I can do that using scene depth. I'm working on a video for proper explanation about scene depth. It will be out soon, I promise. Or if you are watching this in 2030, it is already out. But for now, just follow my lead. To access the scene depth, first I need a depth texture. Uniform Sampler 2D Depth Texture. Then I need to tell Godot that I want to access depth buffer. Otherwise, I will just get a texture slot in the inspector. So hint depth texture. Then let's sample the texture using screen UV. Float depth equals texture. Then the texture to sample is depth texture using screen UV. Then take any channel. This value will be between 0 to 1 in normalized device coordinates. Now I'm using forward plus renderer. Means I'm using Vulkan graphics API. So the actual depth range is 0 to 1 which I already have so that is good. But if you are using mobile or compatibility renderer then that uses OpenGL. And in OpenGL the actual depth range in normalized device coordinates will be minus 1 to 1. So you need to remap this value to minus 1 to 1. Which is easy enough. Depth multiply equals 2 minus 1. But I don't need to do that. Ok now to use the depth value I need to convert it to clip space. Depth equals projection matrix fourth column z component divide by depth plus projection matrix third column z component. Then I need to add vertex position z component to make it relative to my mesh. Now I can use this depth to draw an edge at the intersection. Float edge 
equals smooth step of 0 0.050 0 and depth. If you don't know what smooth step does, check out my smooth step video. But here smooth step will return 0 if the depth value is greater than 0 0.05, returns 1, where the depth value is less than 0. And if the depth value falls between these two, it will be interpolated using Hermit interpolation. Then let's just add the edge to our albedo. So Fresnel plus edge. And I have this effect where my sphere interacts with other meshes. Now I want to add color to my Fresnel and edge. And I want to do that from the inspector. So let's create a VEC3 uniform. Uniform VEC3 Fresnel color. Now this will only give me a vector 3 field in the inspector. I want color picker so I will go hint source color. In the inspector apply some bluish color. Then I will go albedo equals Fresnel color multiply Fresnel plus edge. Now I want my sphere to be transparent so I will set the alpha blending to additive. So render mode blend add. And I also want to render the back faces as well, so cull disabled. Pretty cool. Now is the time to add some pattern onto the sphere. For that, I will use noise. And let me just create a separate function for that. Float noise. And it will take UV as an input. Now here you can sample a noise texture. But it will look slightly pixelated, so I will use gradient noise from the add-on shader lab. To use that, I need to include a GD shader include file first. So here, hash include, then the path of procedural.gd shader include file. By doing this, I can call the functions defined in this file. In the noise function, I will call gradient noise function. So float noise equals gradient noise and it will take uv as an input and another input for scale i will pass 20 and let's just return the noise for now in the fragment processor let's call our noise function float pattern equals noise of uv then add the noise to our albedo so albedo plus equals pattern Okay, I have the noise, but at the top it looks a bit stretched. And I also have this visible scene here. The reason is, my sphere's UVs are like this. So I cannot use the default UV. I need to calculate the UVs, and I can do that using normals. So simply, vector UV equals normal.xy, and use that UV here. Now the seam is gone, but my noise is always aligned to the view angle. That's because the normals are in view space. So I need to convert them to world space. I can use inverse view matrix for that. So UV equals inverse view matrix multiply normal. And the matrix is 4 by 4, so I need to convert the normal to VEC4 as well. And in the W component, I will pass 0. Because normals are direction only, I don't want to translate them. Then take the xy components. Now I don't have the seam anymore. However, I have the stretching going on here. But it won't be a problem. Then I will multiply 0.2 to dial down the noise scale. Now I want to convert this noise into a flow effect. And recently I was researching about generative art and flow fields, so I picked up a nice technique to do that. In the noise function, I will set the scale to 4. Then I want to pan the noise vertically, so uv plus vec2 of 0 and minus time into 0 0.1. Now I will generate 3 more gradient noise and add them on top of the noise variable. So let me duplicate this line and I will go noise plus equals. Then I don't want to pan it, so remove this and set the scale to 3. And I want to dial down the intensity, so multiply it with 0 0.5. Then once again duplicate this, set the scale to 2 and intensity to 0 0.1.
Then once more duplicate this, set the scale to 1 and intensity to 0 0.05. And I want to ping pong this noise left and right, so uv plus back to of sine of time into 0 0.5 and 0. By the way, you can experiment here. Then in the fragment processor, I will go noise of uv plus noise of uv plus noise of uv. So basically what I'm doing here is I've got some noise value here. I'm adding that to the uv so it will distort the uv. Then with that uv, I'm generating another noise value. With that, I'm further distorting this uv. And I'm using it to get the final noise value here. Okay, now I have some flow effect going on here. Let's color it. For that, I will use a gradient, so uniform sampler to the gradient. In the inspector, select the new gradient texture 1D. Set some nice color. While I do that, why don't you hit that like button and if you have any questions, post them in the comments. Okay, now instead of adding pattern here, I will sample the gradient using that pattern. So I'll be do plus equals texture gradient and back to of pattern and then just take RGB and I have a water prism. Now that's all cool, but when you cast a water prism jutsu, the sphere don't just come into existence out of nowhere. The water will come down from below and form this nice sphere. So let's mimic that behavior. First, let's create a float uniform. Uniform float progress. And I want it to go from 0 to 1, so hint range 0, 1, and the step size will be 0 0.01 equals 0. Now my sphere has a radius of 0 0.5 meters. So in the local space, this vertex y component will be 0 0.5 and this will be minus 0 0.5. So in the fragment processor, let's remap the progress value to go from minus 0 0.6 to 0 0.6 just to be safe. Float step edge equals progress multiply 1.2 so instead of 0 to 1, it will go from 0 to 1.2 and subtract 0 0.6. So now it will go from minus 0 0.6 to 0 0.6. Then I will use this step edge as alpha threshold. But first I need vertex position in local space. This vertex will give me the position in view space. And instead of converting it using matrix multiplication, I will just get it from the vertex processor. So first let's declare a varying variable varying vec3 vert ls for local space then in the vertex processor let's grab the value vert ls equals vertex and here this vertex position will be in local space all right now that i have the vertex position in the fragment processor i will go float alpha threshold equals step of word ls y component and step edge step function will return zero if the step edge will be less than vertex position's y component and will return one if it is greater than y position then i will use this alpha threshold as alpha so alpha equals alpha threshold now in the inspector as i increase this progress the sphere will spawn like this as if the water is coming from below to form the prism. And instead of this flat cut, I can distort it with good old sine waves. So here let's go step edge plus equals sine of word ls x component multiply let's say 20. And this is too much so let's dial it down by multiplying some smaller number. Let's say 0.04. I can also pan it so here plus time multiply 5 and we have our nice water prism. Awesome. Now I know that you clicked this video because you saw shiny water prism jutsu on the thumbnail but I need to say this. If you're new to Shaded Land 
and you just follow along solely for the effect, it won't do you any good. The key takeaway from this video should be how I played with normals to fix that UV issue. How I created the flow effect, you could use it in your other shaders as well, like lava for example. And finally, the scene intersection effect using depth. It will come in handy in a lot of effects, like a force field. Now I'm saying all this because I often stumble upon posts like tutorial hell while lurking on various subreddits. So if it sounds very familiar to you, I would recommend you focus more on concepts tutorial than the effects. Like this playlist here. Check it out and I will see you there.